spiel John Tory pants down. Now, for many of you who follow me from the United States of America, you guys might not know what I'm talking about. John Tory is the mayor of Toronto, formerly the mayor of Toronto as of yesterday. And um, <clears throat> because this is uh, a major city in North America, it's one of the fourth largest cities in North America, um, it leads us to having a, a, a deeper conversation about men, men in power, and relationships at the workplace or relationships outside of your conjugal situation. That's where we're going today. This is Big Dale K. Burns in The Real Spiel. Adam Nye Skincare is having a sale for Valentine's Day. I want you to go on her Instagram. Adonai skincare, we love you. You you know you're taking care of our of, of our people, of our melanated people. You know what to put on our faces. Go buy your sweetheart some stuff from Adonai skincare. Also, don't forget Miss Helen. Jot it down. Don't write it down. Jot it down. Dot com. Miss Helen, uh, the Black Inventor, created Jot it down. Dot com. It's an app. Check it out. Fun game app. Something to do while you're on uh, sitting around doing nothing while you're commuting fantastic situation and my guy um al katani the spice man al katani the spice man go on to my um, community page you can check all these people out i linked them on my community page um fantastic partners great to see all my subscribers um, all our members our, our earth wind fire spirit the cyclopses are in the building here we go let me talk to you about something as we as we greet everybody coming in um, you can say hi as you come in, or you can sit there and just listen to what I'm about to say. <clears throat> John Tory, pants down. Listen, <clears throat> John Tory, so he was having an affair. He's about 60 years old, white gentleman. Um, John Tory has been trying to be the mayor of Toronto for a very long time. I think he lost at least three elections. Finally, he won. And uh, he served uh, two terms as the mayor. Got elected in a landslide in October and was, you know, just sailing right along living his dream running a major metropolis city now during the pandemic apparently a 31 year old staffer tory's in his 60s or higher might be a 70 year old man by now i don't know um but he essentially started having a little you know relationship that he described it's something that was outside of his uh character is what he described it as he didn't say it was sexual he said it was a, he said it was something that was outside of the character of his of his nature and the staffer and himself had this relationship during the pandemic where his wife and him were somewhat estranged or not able to see each other all the time work otherwise and uh it's continued up until earlier this year where it it uh it they broke up consensually it was a consensual relationship she broke up with him he broke up with her and then she got a job somewhere else is perfectly employed somewhere else we don't know her name, we don't know her ethnicity, we don't know her eye color, we don't know her race, we don't know her religion, we don't know what her, what her breasts smell like. We have no idea who this woman is. She is long gone. Nothing came up in the scandals before, nothing. There was no scandal, public scandal. No one had whispered anything that was going on. This was broken as a press conference. He came on there happy, you know, go lucky pieces of papers in his hands and said I'd like to just tell everybody about her situation um yeah I've been having an affair and um at this time I, I think I should just step down from being the mayor I'm going to resign I'm sorry to my kids Barb the kids yep okay thanks bye and he basically did it like that it was that quick he just stepped out of office and resigned <clears throat> hit all the news feeds of course they broke all the news and and potentially how it works in Toronto is that the newspapers hold on to it first they wait to check to see if you're going to make a statement and they probably said hey this thing is out um it's best for you to break it first and they went out let him break the news to everybody first and then all the newspapers dropped the story bam everybody dropped it okay how you doing everybody monier my brother how you doing Grayley marshall yeah yeah john tory pants down and so john tory now steps down from office and uh, this young lady who was not assaulted, was not, nothing was done to her as, as far as we know, as far as we know, she's perfectly employed somewhere else. Her name has not been outed, but Tori 
is out of the mayor's job. Now, let me ask you guys a question. I'm serious. What does that have to do with him running a city? Do I care who John Tory sleeps with or not in respect to running a city? Why on earth does the sexual habits of anyone affect what they're doing at their job Monday to Friday? Was there a criminal offense that was taking place? No. Allegedly, no. Was there some kind of impropriety where he was pressuring this young lady based on his position? Apparently, no. No. Okay. So why on earth... This is my question. Why do men have to resign? Why do men have to lose their job because they're having consensual sex? Why? Why do heterosexual men have to do that? Listen, I'm, the other day somebody asked me this question. And this is the context of which I'm saying this in because some of you are very biased, very biased. I'm not gonna say who, but I will say some of you. I just, somebody asked me a question the other day and they said, Please tell me your pronouns. What they said to me. To, um, I, I just want to know, you know, what are your pronouns? And I said, my pronouns are sweet sexual chocolate. Call me sweet sexual chocolate. Sweet sexual. And I just went on. Sweet sexual chocolate. That's my pronoun. Call me. Why can't I identify sweet sexual chocolate? Why not? I in this fluid world of people identifying as anything. Today I feel like a woman, to, to, but sometimes I don't. Sometimes I feel like a man, and sometimes I, I don't feel like either. Today I feel like a little child, and I want to be treated as a little child. And I have a family, I'm 67 years old, but I have a family that allows me to be a little child, and I actually have um, a big sister who's 11 because I want to be nine. That's real, That's I didn't make that up. There's people like this. Why? Does a heterosexual man, and yes, he's cheating on his wife, that's a that's a that's an internal problem between him and his wife, right? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but we you know a lot of things are weird these days. Why of uh, why all of a sudden that handicaps his capacity to be the mayor? Nobody is running around worrying about John Tory, 60-year-old, wrinkled up diggling. Nobody. Oh, not me clearly not his wife. So this is a scenario where this is becoming more and more rampant, where there is a hyper microscope, there is a super focus on heterosexual male activity in consensual environments. Can I say that again, please? There seems to be a super focus on heterosexual male activity in consensual environments where two adults are consenting to have secret relations or public relations or private relations, whatever they happen to be. Why does that spill into their incapacity to do their profession? I don't understand that. It is. It doesn't make sense to me. Well, let me be my own advocate, angel's advocate, or as I say, you know, the other side of the, the other side of the coin. Did this mystery lady expose him? Not that I know of, Monet. I he, apparently he was not exposed. The mystery lady has a job. She's comfortable. Nobody knows who she is. She didn't lose her check. She didn't lose any. She's not going to be called a disgraced. Uh, mayor, she's not going to have any scandal touch her at all. But Tory, forever, nothing he did, nothing he did in the past will ever rinse away the fact that he has stepped into a scandal with his pants down. Because the only people that are not allowed to have consensual sex are heterosexual men. <laughs> This lady gets off scot-free, right? Because she didn't do anything wrong, so why should she be persecuted, right? She shouldn't. Well, she's not the mayor. She's not the mayor, so man, there's, a, there's a responsibility when you are a person of authority to have, 
nonsense. There's a responsibility to keep your private life private. He did so. There's a responsibility to do the job that you were hired to do. He did so. The rest life, buddy. It's between you, them sheets, Jesus, and the person under the sheets with you. And, and this is the, the interesting part. None of these people practice any form of levels of religious morality until it comes to this department. This area right here, everybody is super sensitive of the sexuality of a 60 year old man with a woman who is consenting to those things. I don't understand why you lose your check for that. I keep coming back to the same issue because I tell you right now, I wouldn't step down for a second. I'll be like, who in here is refereeing my sexual life? My sexual life, it should be refereed by the people, person, who people are persons, right? Because that's where we live in right now, right? That's where most of y'all live in right now. The people are persons that I decide to engage on that level consensually. We are the only referees. We have the whistle. Stop, go, stop, go. That's our whistle. Why do we put these things in the public forum and allow now this man, I, 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 again, he's a 60-year-old, could be 70, year old, white, Caucasian male. <clears throat> so that means, yo, once they're coming for y'all, they come for everybody, <laughs> okay? 60-year-old, white, Caucasian, multi-millionaire, which is why he quit so easy, because he walked away from it, who's made his check, he's got his money, he's got his family, he's got his stellar reputation, and he had a little side little side situation going on with, with Little Miss Mystery. All of a sudden, this guy can't do his job anymore. Well, you, 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 know, you, you know when you sleep with somebody, you can't do your job anymore. It's just, it just it's something that, no. Should she, should he not sleep with employees? Well, yeah, it's probably a bad idea because that lost him his job. But would it have made a difference? Would it have made a difference if she was working for another company and not connected to the mayor's position? The fact that he is now outside of his marriage, is that the issue or is it was it that she was a staffer? Or, or is it both? Is it because they were doing stuff in inappropriate places, inappropriate ways? All these conversations keep happening where men who are, and again, this isn't just men of power, men of authority. This can happen to any man, any job, any level of life, period. You have sex with the wrong woman consensually, you lose your check. She loses nothing. You lose your check. In fact, you give her some time, she'll get a platform and become a victim for her consensual sexual choices with you. All of a sudden, she boggles the mind how consensuality, consensuality can create victimization on either side, on either side, let's be fair. But when something is consensual and you are of age and you are not coerced, you are not pressured, where is the victimization? This is what I'm, it confuses me. So that I was assuming maybe uh, he had her fired. No, she got another job is what, what he said. Now we don't know the full story. This is John Tory's version, right? Uh, it wasn't the case. I don't understand why all this. I don't understand why anyone would choose. Okay, let me say it this part. Let me say it this way too. I'm the spouse, right? I ain't going to put myself as a woman because I don't know how to do that. I'm the man. My wife is a person of authority holding a political office. And she's been cheating on me with some dude at the office, right? Do you think I want her to go out there and say, you know what, I've been having sex with, I've been having sex with Bartholomew and me and Bart, you know, we've had, we've had relations for years and I apologize to my husband, Del, and to my children 
and I just hope we can just work this thing out. You can't work nothing out with me. <laughs> you just put all of our business on Front Street. My people gonna look at me like, bro, I had no idea your, your chick went down like, got down like that. Whoa, that's crazy. Whoa, you ain't gonna stay with her, are you? That makes the whole thing worse. Because you put the woman on, on you basically put your wife in a position where now she's embarrassed, right? Even if she knew, even if she's the one who found out and said, John, I'm, John, I'm, I, I'm besides myself in this, John. I'll, I'm gonna handle it, I'm going to handle it. I would like everybody to know I've been cheating on my wife. It's not fair. Hell no, that's not how you handle it, John. How you handle it is you go about your business, do your job, you buy that woman everything that she wants, buy her a new house, do everything that you want for her, get her a pool, cabana boy, whatever you gotta do, but you don't embarrass her in the public forum because now every time they see your wife, they're gonna say, oh, I don't know how you do it, Margaret. Well, oh, actually, it's Barb. I don't know how you do it, Barb. You're such a strong woman, Barb. And Barb has to relive this in the pity of every single human being who sees her from now on John's gonna be trying to hold her hand in public and say, yeah, me and Barb have gone to counseling. You and Barb ain't going to counseling, John. You're going to the divorce lawyer and Barb's gonna rinse out your pockets. <sighs> I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta exhale here. I gotta exhale. You call out your wife by name, Frederick call her out by name. Me and Barb, me and Barb are going to work it out. You and Barb are going to work it out. If I was a divorce attorney right now, I'd be calling Barb. Be like, Barb, you know what? You guys made a way work it out, but well, we can maybe get a few million out of it just in case it doesn't work out. He's in a position right now, Barb, where he's very, very apologetic. Let's ask him for a settlement. Let's ask him to work his way back into the marriage. Let's get about 20 million out of it. <laughs> like, I, if I was a divorce attorney, me and Barb will be having coffee right now. On me, Barb. On me. I got some divorce attorneys that can help me out, Barb. But at the end of the day, this guy shouldn't have to go through and lose this job. Because we know your pension's going to Barb. And the severance check that the city wrote for you, oh, we know you worked that out ahead of time. Half of that's gotta go to Barb. Barb's got a payday coming, right? Barb's got a payday coming, and it's Barb's right. Right? You you married into this family law system of North America that gives women half of your stuff because now you're their wife and they get half your stuff. You mess up, they walk down the court, they don't need a reason, they take half your stuff. That's what you signed up for that. You had kids, you did that. Hey buddy, that's what you have to that that's that's society. That's what it is. Right? The other lady, she gets to walk away into the sunset, have another affair with her boss. You know, I'm sure she was Tory sugar daddy. I'm sure, her sugar baby, I'm sure she has a couple of condos that have been made out for her. I'm sure she's driving nice, sitting pretty with some liras and some, some RSP money that came straight from the mayor's office. I'm sure she's good. The only person that's gonna be 60 years old, okay, flying out of here to Cuba, looking for a, looking for a wife in Cuba, 31 year old, because apparently he likes chicks half his age. Who doesn't when you're 60? But like, He's going to be in a scenario where he's probably looking for his relationship situation to happen in a different way. Hopefully he's got his money offshore. But Barb and the other chick are going to be fine. And this is how this thing works out. Heterosexual men. It's bad rap, baby. Bad rap. Everybody else can do this. Let's say John Tory was a homosexual. Right? John Tory has to let her go. She's still gonna, he's still gonna meet up with her. I don't, I don't think he'll do that. I, I think that'd be very unwise of him. A lot of fish in the sea. A lot of 31-year-old fish in the sea. He doesn't have to go meet up with that chick. But let's say he was a homosexual, and he's had a long relationship with his homosexual partner, and then he decides that he's gonna have uh, a homosexual affair with a, with a 30-year-old homosexual staffer. I guarantee you he's not stepping down. I guarantee you he is not stepping down because for some reason 
alternative lifestyles are not held to the same standard of heterosexual relationships. They're just not. They're just not. Period. They're not. He would have never stepped down at all. If John Tory decided that he wanted to go through a gender reassignment, he would never step down. These things, these, these decisions to lose your public office and all these things seemingly, and forgive me if you have a comparative analysis, they seem to only stick to the heterosexual men category. And I think it's a little bit unfair that good old John, who's doing a bang up job as a mayor, not really, but he, I mean, he, he, he wasn't, he wasn't, he wasn't, the boat wasn't sinking, you know, he has to lose his check. Because why? He had a consensual relation. And, and you high moral people, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to these liberal individuals who everything is okay, there's no right, there's no wrong, there's no up, there's no down. Why do you have a conscience when it comes to heterosexual men sleeping with a heterosexual woman consensually? Why? All, and because this wasn't done in a vacuum. Tory has got his advisor sitting around. This doesn't look good for you. I think you should step down. I think you should just resign. I think you should get ahead of this. I think, you know, it looks better if you say it before the, the newspapers say it and clean break. You've had a good run at this. We don't want to end this with scandal. You don't want to come Rob Ford. All the stuff that I'm sure that was being whispered in his ears. He was like, yeah, you're right. You're right. I've made enough money. I've done my good. I think it's be bad for the city. All the stuff that that they create the taboo. Oh my goodness. John, John was having sex. <laughs> John was having sex, everybody. Oh, now everybody's got to sit there and think of John Tory's yellow toenails coming out of some socks with some white, white uh, fruit of the looms, you know, talking about, hey there, hey there, Margaret. Let's do, let's do the do. I, I, I can't get the image out of my mind. I didn't want that image in my head. And it's ridiculous. To me, it's ridiculous. John Tory with his pants down. A lot of men have had their pants down. A lot of men. A lot of men have been caught with their pants down. And guess what? Everybody's allowed to take their pants down every now and then. Got to get in your pajamas. Got to get in your underwear. Got to take a shower. Pants down is a situation where heterosexual men have sex. Do you know that? Heterosexual men have sex. They do. They really do. And some of you need to get over it. They, y'all just need to get over it. Heterosexual men have sex. Now, if you're on the religious side of this conversation, we know, we, we, we already know. He was cheated on his wife. It was a terrible thing. It's a horrible thing. It's painful for everybody involved. I wish him and his family well. But guess what, guys? They're not on the religious side of the conversation. They're not those people. They're not those people. Let's not apply values to people who do not share your value system. They're not those people, okay? They aren't. They don't enter covenant like that. They don't think of their life like that. They don't have a worldview like that. They're not about that life. They're not. So I understand our religious people, as I am one of them, saying, yeah, well, this is terrible. This guy cheated on his wife. Yeah, it is terrible. It is terrible he cheated on his wife. So guess what? When the bus driver cheats on his wife, he can't drive a bus no more? Huh? When the electrician cheats on his wife, oh my gosh, Billy, we heard you cheated on your wife. I don't think you can run these circuits anymore. These circuits won't work for you now, Billy. They just, they just won't respond to a cheater. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. You don't lose your check. I don't care who you are. When these Roman Catholic priests are doing the unthinkable with children, they don't even fire them. They send them to another doggone town out of the place where they were doing it before, and these guys continue their nonsense. And yeah, you come for those guys. 
but I, and you should come for those guys. Those guys are predators. You should absolutely come for those guys. But my point is, they don't lose their check. So why in the realm of legal, consensual sex with an adult, do heterosexual relationships with men run this? This is what happened in Boston, right? With Ime Yudoka. Ime Yudoka, again, this is the Ime Yudoka scenario, but with a white man who's a politician, right? Let's, let's say it again. He's a white man who's a politician. This thing, like I said, once it hits the white fellas, no one's safe. We can't even say, well, look what they did to Ime Yudoka. But if he was white, can't say that no more because John Tory. But the only difference is John Tory got to, he got to leave his own way, right? John Tory got to make his own statement. John Tory got to wave goodbye and say, everybody, thanks, thanks for the time. Thanks for the good times, right? Ime Udoka was just silenced, put down on the side. Oh my goodness, you're having sex. And oh, but he was having sex with other people's wives. It was consensual. This is the point I'm trying to make here. Consensual, heterosexual sex. The man loses his check. No, no. Well, we're not going to put those women on blast. Why not? They were having sex with their husbands too. But only Ime Udoka was put on blast. He wasn't married. Well, he's having, he had a relationship with, 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 with Nia Long. They weren't married, but the chick he was sleeping with was married. No one put her on blast. Heterosexual male sexuality is being targeted as some kind of boogeyman. It's not a boogeyman. It's normal. It is normal. You have these men in, in proxy. You know what? You know what you guys got to say? Maybe these Muslims are correct. Maybe you need to separate men and women altogether. Keep them on a completely different side of the building so that these kind of things don't happen. Maybe John Tory and all of his staffers, maybe she needed to walk around. These horrendous things don't happen. But if you're not, if you're not conservative enough to do that, You've got, to, you've got to understand that in secular living, the, and I don't even understand secular people, to be honest with you, because I, if I was a person of a non-religious perspective, there's a lot of things that I just wouldn't think about, marriage being one of them. Marriage is a thing that, unless you have a religious mindset, why get married? Why, why are you getting married if you're not a person who's God-fearing and thinks that the only way that you can interact with another human being intimately is via the condoning of a relationship with with God, I, if you don't see life like that, what the heck is marriage to? What are you saying? What are you saying vows to? Like what? It, what? Do you, it doesn't make sense. So I'm talking to those people. I'm talking to the non-religious, liberal, secular individual who goes about their life saying, "I'm a good person. I don't hurt anybody. I don't. I don't steal. I don't rob. I pay my taxes." John Tory saw a 31-year-old woman. She saw him. She saw love in that 60-year-old wrinkled, wrinkled, sagging body. And they had a good old time during the pandemic. They kept, there wasn't much social distancing going on there, boy. They, he, was, he was bridging the gap for the community. <laughs> but at the end of the day, they were a consensual relationship of people of non-religious, non-moral fortitude who said, we are having a consensual relationship. And was it cheating on a spouse? Absolutely, he said so. Should that be something he deals with in the private forum of his home? Absolutely. Is that our problem in the public sector? Nope. I could care less. I love you, Barb. Don't know you. But it's not my problem what John Tory is doing in the privacy of his home, in the privacy of his hotel, in the privacy of anywhere else that him and the mystery lady did their thing. And mystery lady, Ben Barb. Uh, Miss Ann, good to see you, Miss Ann. I'm sorry to even bring this kind of conversation up, Miss Ann. We, you know, I, I know we don't talk about things like this, Miss Ann, but I just, I just don't understand the the imbalance that that is taking place right now in our secular culture. Um, you guys confuse us. Sometimes we think that everything's okay. 
You know what I'm saying? You see, we, we think that, hey, wow, these guys are really getting liberal right now. You know, people are walking around calling people they, you know, because they can't call them he or can't call them her. So they're, they're they. And, you know, we're comfortable with that at the workplace, right? We're, we're using proper pronouns. We're doing all that stuff. But then it comes to John Tory having a consensual relationship. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, it's like, oh my gosh, what's going on? It's terrible. It's horrible. It's, it's, it's outrageous. The sky's falling because a heterosexual man had sex with a heterosexual woman. Oh no! These are the things that confuse me. I'm just confused. I'm confused. Absolutely confused. Right? And 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 it's it's I've seen too much I've seen too much imbalance in my life. I've seen too much imbalance. I've had people throw stones at me, you know, and they're they're standing in a rock garden declaring that, you know, they're 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 in a they're in a they're in a rose garden. Like I've seen too much. I've seen too much. And uh, this level of scrutiny that, that is now clearly on heterosexual male sexuality to me, it's just, it's too much. And uh, I'm gonna leave it there. I'm gonna say to you that I would like all of us to analyze how we truly feel about our public officials, males, coaches, of, of any of any type, male coaches, male male corporate leaders, how do we really feel about these people going about their life, having sexuality? Is is any of this our business? Do I care? Do I care what my mailman is doing in the privacy of his home? I just want my dog on Amazon delivery. That's all I want. This guy, I'm, I'm here at my mechanic shop. I got to get off this phone. But I don't care what this guy did last night. I care what he does with my car. I don't care. And I do not care about what public officials do in the privacy of their home. I don't care. But this is what I do care about. When it comes my turn, because everybody's going to have their pants down for somebody. When it comes my turn, don't just drag me. Drag that chick too. Right? We switch this thing up. They dragged that woman caught in the, in the, in the, they caught her in the midst of adultery. Right? They dragged her before Jesus, but they didn't drag the man. And now we switch that around. We leave that woman in the bed <laughs> and we drag the man before the public sector and we say, stone him. That's what we're doing now. And if it wasn't good to drag that woman out there and leave her in Jesus' feet and say, hey, Lord, what do we do with this woman? She's been caught in the, in the she's been caught in the very act of adultery. He that is without sin, as I finish this, you cast the first stone. John Tory, I can't judge you, buddy. Everybody's had their pants down.